שלום, 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 שלום to our viewing audience, in the name of our Father Yahweh and his only begotten son, Yeshua, Hamashiach. I want to especially apologize for the lead start due to technical difficulty, but uh, Yah has allowed us to go ahead by giving us the opportunity to speak to his word. And um, I am thankful and grateful for our listening audience, our viewing audience, brethren throughout the length and breadth of the world, brethren who fear Elohim and who eschew evil, brethren who, whose mind is stayed upon the things of Almighty Yahweh, upon his laws, his statutes, his precepts, his ordinances, his judgments that as we live our life, we will do them as is commanded. So it has been a very good morning. Once you are in the land of the living to give thanks, um, it is something that you have to be grateful for. It's really and truly a privilege because many a persons have not seen this day and um, we are in the land of the living, and it is the living that will praise Elohim and not the dead, because the dead knows nothing. His very thought is perish from the day he died. So, you know, it's the Shabbat, the day set apart by Yahweh, where we as his people ought to set apart ourselves unto him by resting from all our works, our labors, our pleasures, etc., and to come before him in holy communion, to sing praises unto his name, to worship him, to listen to his words, to fellowship. I mean, COVID has made fellowship in a little difficult that is face to face or challenging. However, we have this platform or this medium whereby we can still participate in fellowship. And uh, wherever we are, you know, the advantage of this medium, wherever we are globally, we can connect. And that is tremendously important. And therefore we are supposed to be thanks as always in everything we thanks. Because this is the will of Yahweh for us, for our lives. Thanksgiving, praise and worship. So this morning, you know, we will delve into a message. It's a, it's a very thought-provoking message. It's a very deep message. And of course, it is supposed to be a very personal message to everyone because uh, we all, as individuals, worship Yahweh. While we are each other's keeper, as it is written, and while we are supposed to sharpen one another's continents, even as I and sharpen iron, we are also responsible for our lives, you know, for our relationships, with, whether it's man or with Elohim. And so we're looking at today the inner man, and more specifically, the renewing of the inner man. You understand? This is. This is very deep and far reaching. This is a personal study, a personal communication, conversation, however you want to do it, or say it, or think of it. It is personal, the inner man, the renewal of the inner man. So therefore, while I can encourage you and you can encourage me, but it, 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 it depends on me or it depends on you as an individual to do what I am supposed to do or you are supposed to do so that collectively we can be strong. But if we do not pay heed to the individual sacrifice that we are supposed to make as living, a life of uprightness and righteousness is concerned, then it really doesn't make sense 
collectively to come together because we, every man have to seek his own salvation, the scripture see, in fear and in trembling. I mean, there's a say, no man is an island. So we garner our strength, our inner strength, and you know, all the virtues that tell him has been in store for us that if we do what he, he will for our life, then he will bestow upon us those virtues. However, everything is dependent upon how we maintain the inner man, the maintenance of the inner man, how we, how we keep it. It's, 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 it's a place where the spirit of Elohim comes to dwell. And um, it, 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 he said that knowing not that you are the temple of Elohim, you know, and, and it, made, it made reference to which temple are he, you know? And so that boils down, you know, when we, have, when we encapsulate, encapsulate, sorry, everything, it boils down to the inner man. So basically what really is the inner man? You know, in a nutshell, when I read the scriptures for myself, and um, you know, I've heard many uh, uh, persons give you the different understanding of the inner man, you know? Um, but for me, the inner man is the soul or the spirit within you, you know, what is, something that is intangible that you can't see, no man can see except Elohim, because he says that he knows the heart, because he searched the depth and the ruins of it to give every man according as his work shall be. So he knows it, but do I know it or you know it, although we can see the, the fruits that we bear, we can see that, hey, these fruits are not of in accordance with the will of Elohim. You know, there's the fruits of the spirit and there's the fruits of the flesh. And that is why the outer man, the outer man, what we have, this physical thing that we have, the shell, so to speak, to house the inner man, is the flesh. And we, we are constantly um, being warned that we should guard against the works of the flesh because the works of the flesh is what will ultimately bring us death. But the works of the spirit or the gift or the fruits of the spirit is what will ultimately bring us life. And it is the still small voice that is within us that is a weakness to either righteousness or evil. So I was looking at the, 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 the root word of inner man in both the Greek and the Hebrew and you know, it, it really is the same because the first word I, I saw was 2080 in the Greek, which is iso. And iso simply means within, not without, within. And it's a word origin, it's an adverb for is, E I S. And it means inside, within, or inward. You know, and it, it brings to mind when. The disciples ate with one wash hands and the, the Pharisees and them were criticizing them. And Yahshua said, you know, Yahshua had to come in and let them know, hey, he's not really washing, eating with one wash hands. Because that really does not defile a man, but what comes from within the man, the inward man. Because that's where the fornication, the adultery, the murders, etc., etc., come from. So Isu within is we inside within inwards there's also metano metano is to change one's mind so after you have been put to a test so to speak or you go through a certain experience or life or living then there is something within that will tell you as Yahweh's spirit connect with your spirit that will tell you you have to do um, repentance or teshuva. You have to confess and forsake your sin and live a righteous life. So to change one's mind or purpose or to repent, to change the inner man, repentance is not just the out, is just is not just an outward thing where you go and you get baptized and so on. 
because you could go and you could get baptized and basically as it has been said in the past that, that baptism is basically a bath and not necessarily anything to change you, but um, to repent where the inner man is, is, is what that is in operation, to change the inner man, especially with reference to acceptance of the will of Yahweh, acceptance of the will of Yahweh. That is the cleansing of the inner man. That is how you renew the inner man on a daily basis. You know, you have to understand that everything is, is based on or is predicated on the will of Yahweh, not your will, not my will, but the will of Elohim. As Yeshua said, my, my, um, my food is to do your will. You understand? I feed upon that, your will, because your will is life. Your will is the, the true expression of who you are. And we will base our faith, we will boost, we will rest, we will anchor our faith in your will, not our will, because our will basically is the works of the flesh. You know, there's nothing good in, in man, you know. And so the inner man has to be something that is deep within. We know ourselves. And in as much as we know ourselves, we know what the will of Elohim is. So then we seeing the two, Elohim spirit working within us, making this operation so that our minds, that's why it is said, be transformed by the renewing of your mind, the inner man, your mind, that's, that is the, 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 the place where you know, you can think and you can make choices and, and what you end, what enters in, like they say, in the IT world, garbage in, garbage out. If you put garbage in there, then certainly it's garbage that you will produce and bring out. But if you put what is good in there, what will be coming out of there is good. There's also a food wood. It is fusis or it's nature, natural the underlying constitution or makeup of someone, the underlying constitution or makeup of someone. Of course, our underlying constitution and makeup, let us go in, 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 the, in the book, the, the very beginning as a side text, but as a reference, which would give us a better appreciation of what um, fusis or nature is. Not. You know, it says, and um, in the beginning, Elohim, Genesis 1, created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form, and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the spirit of Elohim moved upon the face of the waters. In the very same way, the spirit of Elohim moves within us. You understand? It moves within us, and it is the witness that, or the power to, to give us the witness between right and wrong. And so if you go down to verse 25, and of course, verse 26 in that same chapter, it says, and Elohim made the beasts of the earth after his kind, cattle after their kind, everything that creepeth upon the earth after their kind. And Elohim saw that it was good. And then he said in verse 26, and Elohim said, let us make man, man, we human, human beings, in our image, yes, hallelujah, and after our likeness. In our image and after our likeness. And that is why we have to go back with the reference to acceptance of the will of Elohim for us. And that is why we have to look at the underlying constitution or makeup of humanity, the will, the mind, the heart. You understand, we are made in the image of Elohim and after his likeness. The other animals won't. It's only human beings, humanity. And so in our nature, after sin, you know, we, we see evil came in. But when Elohim made man, Elohim made man and they were good. They, they, they were not born in sin. You know, they were tempted and uh, temptation, they yield to it. And of course, sin came upon the human race. So the inner man, the soul, the spirit that dwell in it, 
you know, we have to understand it must be renewed on a daily basis. So we have looked at the Greek esu, metanio, and phusis within. They all speaks to the inner man or within. The Hebrew now is word 3820, which is lab or leb, L-E-B. And it is your mind, your will, your heart. Again, it boils back to the same inner man, you know. And this is what we have to work around and, and let the spirit of Elohim, you know, do the operation within us. We have to be mindful of, we have to, you know, make the necessary uh, sacrifices and adjustments to our lives. Because when something is going wrong, for example, we, 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 we you know this COVID-19 pandemic and we have to do a lot of adjustments in our lives. We have to be adaptable to, to, to a lot of new things, as they say, the new normal. But Yahweh expects us with, for us to be adjusting to his will as it pertains to our living, our life, as it pertains to our inner man. How do our inner man adjust and adapt to the will of Elohim? Because without adjusting and adapting to his will, then of course, our life is a, an unpurposeful life. It's a life, you know, you're just living, but you're not living to no purpose or with no purpose. And without a life without purpose, without aims and objectives, then you know you actually live in an empty life, a vain life, and that is what Solomon called vanity. You understand vanity of vanities, vanity and a vexation of the inner man, the spirit, the soul. So adjustments must be made. We have to understand who we are. And Jeremiah the prophet has a, a scripture that we are supposed to really read and understand. You know, Jeremiah chapter 17 and verses seven to nine. This is a very powerful um, rendering when it comes to the scriptures pertaining the inner man. It says, blessed is the man that trusteth in Yahweh and whose hope Yahweh is. Again, the acceptance of the will of Elohim, the man who trusts in Yahweh one and whose hope is in Yahweh. <laughs> and that is the beginning of it. To renew that inner man, we must first trust in Yahweh and we must second, as we put our trust in him, hope or wait upon him. It says, for he shall be as a tree planted by the waters and that spreadeth out her roots by the river and shall not see when heat cometh, but her leaf shall be green and shall not be careful in the years of drought, neither shall cease from yielding. So you see there are tangible benefits, tangible benefits, both physical and spiritual benefits to humanity. That is for those who trust in Yahweh Elohim and whose hope is in him. Of course, you shall be fruitful. You shall live a life full of purpose, full of vigor, full of energy, you know, just a blessed life, so to speak. And you shall bring forth fruits, fruits of the spirit automatically fruits of the spirit because you have fed yourself with the things pertaining to the spirit which cleanses the inner man on a daily basis and so you would overcome the works of the flesh which essentially leads to death however the cleansing of the inner man leads to everlasting life and so verse 9 is the crux of the matter. And essentially, the inner man is the heart or the mind where the spirit dwells. You know, this is the center of man, 
This is where we make our connection with Elohim. The connection is not just an outward connection, but it is an, a hidden connection, an inner man, a hidden man, but a man who's, who trusts in Elohim and who, whose hope is in Elohim. He says the heart is deceitful, yes. And we could, you know, we could go from now till thy kingdom come to, to, to expound on the deceitfulness of man's heart. And we know it, we are seeing it on a daily basis. It is deceitful above all things, above all things, because it is the first, it is where we connect with Elohim. Desperately we get it is one, deceitful above all things, and two, it is desperately wicked from within there. That's why Yeshua was telling the Pharisees and them that there is not to walk or walk, um, eating with unwashed hands, but what is in there, because in there can be a sepulcher, you know, a lot of um, a dead men's bone, adultery, fornication, theft, and any transgression against Torah, the word of Elohim. Um, so the heart is deceitful and the heart is desperately wicked. So the inner man is deceitful and the inner man is wicked. That's why we can see, you know, hypocrisy and, and all these negativities, you know, within humanity, you know, and that is why we have to look within and, and, and make that cleansing, you know, take this audit, so to speak, of our lives and, and, and and how we think and how we live and what we do and what we say, etc., so that we will be able to align ourselves with the will of Elohim and that our, our works will be accepted by him. And so it says that um, it is both deceitful and, and, and it is also wicked. But the question is asked, who can know it? It is a question that According to the prophet Jeremiah, or Jeremiah, who can know the heart, the heart that is deceitful and the heart that is wicked? Who can know it? But we read in Genesis that Elohim made man in his image and after his likeness, not any of the other animals, but humanity. You know, and we saw from the very second verse in Genesis 1 that the spirit of Yahweh hoover upon the face of the deep. In the same manner, it hovers within our hearts and minds, yes. And so it says, the answer says, I, Yahweh, search the heart, the one whom, from whom we are made in his image and after his own likeness, he searcheth the heart. I search the heart, I try the ruins. The ruins is the depth of it, the deepest part of the heart so that nothing can be hidden from me. I search the ruins, even to give every man according to his ways. So Yahweh, you can't buy him. You can't pay your way to buy him and, and for him to compromise his standards of righteousness just to appease you. No, that will not work. Yahweh is not a man. He's not a, the son of man that he should repent. The defect is not of him but of the children of men. It is written in the Torah. So he said, even to give every man according to his ways. So he's an Elohim of justice and righteousness, balance. There is perfect equilibrium where Elohim is concerned. And he does not look at face. He does not look at your position, whether you're rich or whether you're poor. He does not look at anything, but he is going to do everything in accordance with his standards. And he, he is Yahweh, he cannot lie. He is Yahweh, he cannot change. And basically, he says he's gonna search our hearts and he's gonna try our ruins. So there's nothing will be hidden from him. And he's gonna give every single one of us according to our ways and according to the fruits of our doings. So basically, I mean, this sets the tool to the cleansing of the inner man, to making a daily sacrifice, 
to cleanse the inner man. Notwithstanding, we are not perfect and we may, may, you know, we may make mistakes, we may even sin. But the point is, is to acknowledge. And you know, the beautiful thing about this thing, when you read, I think Psalm 51, and I touched on it last Shabbat in my message concerning the situation in David and Bathsheba. You understand? And, and, and the thing about this thing is you have to be genuinely, genuinely concerned about your personal repentance. So knowing that Elohim such the ruins are very deep, the, the furthest part that nothing can be hidden from him, then um, teshuva or repentance must be genuine. It cannot be just lip service um, because in so doing, you are not, you know, renewing the cinema because this is a daily sacrifice. Why? I think it is because we know not the day nor the hour that we will live this life, you know. And whilst we have the, the breath of life in this tabernacle, we have to understand as Shaul, Rav Shaul, or the Apostle Paul said, Knowing not that your body is the temple of the set apart spirit that lives within you. Knowing not that you are bought with a price, you are purchased, you have been redeemed. You know, therefore honor him within the inner man and likewise outside, but more so within the inner man because what comes out from there will be exhibited on the outer man or the, or, or the flesh, so to speak what man can see. So, you know, it's a, it's, it's, a, it's a question that, you know, we have to constantly seek to ask ourselves and constantly go to Elohim for counseling, for the counsel of Yahweh standeth sure. Having the seal, Elohim knoweth those that are his. And let everyone who nameth the name of Elohim depart from iniquity, and that is the bottom line. There's no if or buts about that. Elohim, again, I say, is not a man. He's not one that is partial in judgment. He's impartial. He's balanced. He's just and he's right. And everything that he does, it is to his honor and to his glory and his majesty. And so um, Paul, I think, said it, and also David in the Psalms that I will delight in the law, the Torah, the law of Elohim, after the inner man, after the inner man, not just the outward show. Yes, you know, we have a lot of outward show. We have a lot of, you know, charisma, and we can be very charismatic. We can be very persuasive, et cetera, et cetera. We can, we can use wits. We can use all what we have, all our intelligence. However, if the inner man is not in compliance, or is not subjected to the will or the law of Elohim, it makes no sense, absolutely no sense. So Teshuvah is what is important, what we should look at and what we should accept doing so that we can continuously renew this inner man because we have to do it on a daily basis because we do not know when Elohim will call us home. In other words, not know when we'll live this life and it is very unfortunate having known all these things and not doing what it is, what it is saying to us or commanding or instructing us that you know, we'll find ourselves in a situation where we could actually lose our eternity with Elohim. So that is the underlying principle that I, you, all of us to continuously validate by the life we live. Yes, continuously make it our mantra, continuously make it, you know, the way in which we were called. We were called to life, not death. We were called to living, living righteously, living uprightly, living humbly, you know. And all these things come because of what we do and what we practice, how we think. Where do we go? What do we watch? What do we see? What? Et cetera, et cetera. And that is, you know, a continuous uh, training, a continuous um, keeping up of the inner man that Elohim will accept our sacrifices, which is 
essentially our reasonable service to him and to our fellow man. So 2 Corinthians chapter 4, 16, let's say what Rav Shaul has to say um, in context with this um, message, the renewing of the inner man, the soul, the spirit, the heart, the mind, you know, because it is very important for us. And uh, as we get the knowledge and the understanding, let us wisely make the decisions that would essentially please Elohim and consequently it will redound to our blessings and to that type of relationship that we so desire to keep with our maker. And so 2 Corinthians 4, 16 has something very important for us. And um, at the end of the day, we could go down to verse 18. It is, it is something that we can read. Yes, it's a letter to the Corinthians, but I believe that you, 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 you garner what you garner from it, what you, what you get from it, the essentials of what is being spoken of there is what is important, not necessarily you believe or you don't believe in the, in the, in the New Testament or the Brit Kadasha, because there are those who don't believe, but essentially let us hear the matter where the inner man, it says for, um, we could take, yeah, for, for which cause we faint not, but do our outward man, we could take from this, um, 15, so you get a better appreciation of what is being said. For all things are for your sake, that the abundance of grace might through the thanksgiving of many excel to honor of Elohim, to the honor of Elohim again. That, that is what as our primary purpose under the sun. So all things we do, it is to the honor and praise of Elohim. For which cause, verse 16, we faint not. We do not faint. We are not weak. We are not going to forget about that. We are going to be strong where that is concerned. But do our outward man perish? Our outward man, the physical, the flesh, what can be seen, do it perish? It will perish inevitably. Yet the inner, the inner man is renewed day by day. Hallelujah. And that is what is the most important thing for any human being, that even though the outward man perish, but that inner man, that inner man, it will never fail, you know, but it will be renewed day by day on a daily basis. Day by day, as the songwriter said, when, and if with, with each passing moment, Strength I find to meet my trials there. Trusting in my father's own, this torment, I have no cause for worry or for fear. And that is tremendously important that the inward man is being renewed on a daily basis. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, woke up for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of honor. While we look not at the things which are seen, hallelujah, but the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, the flesh, the physical, the outward. But the things which are not seen are eternal. So eternal life is coming, it's a within thing. It's not a without things. Within the inner man, the renewing, of the inner man on a daily basis. So if I am a thief, I repent and I, I, I pray away, I, I associate myself with those who could strengthen me for the countenance of one man's brightens another, I am sharp never I am. I will not go among thieves and robbers because they will not tell me anything otherwise but to do things, to craft things so that I could continue in my stealing or whatever the transgression against the law of Yahweh is. I cannot renew my inner, inner man in those types of environments, with those types of companions or associations. But on the contrary, I have to move from there and go to the other side where 
I could garner strength. I can garner encouragement. I can garner knowledge. And then I can make the personal sacrifice. And that, brethren, is essential. Ephesians 3.16. We're just looking at a few letters of Rav Shaul to the various assemblies. We read to the assemblies in Corinth, now to the assembly in Ephesus or Ephesians chapter 3. And uh, it has something here for us. And um, uh, this falling, and uh, we will stop on is 90. So it says, for this cause, for this very cause, I bow my knees unto the Father of our Master, Yeshua HaMashiach, of whom the whole heaven, the whole family in heaven, and of his name, that he would grant you, or us, if you may, according to the riches of his majesty, to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man, again, expressing that, you know, it is based on the acceptance of the will of Elohim and, and, and knowing fully well it is the underlying constitution or makeup of we, me, you, us, humanity. Yes, the inner man, that the Messiah may dwell in our hearts by faith, that he being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth, that is the width, what is the length, the length, the depth and the height, and to know the love of the Messiah, which passeth knowledge that he might be filled with all the fullness of Elohim. Now, verse 20, now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think that is unto Yahweh, according to the power that worketh in us, unto him be honor in the assembly by the Messiah, sure, throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. And so again, we can see it is the inner man. And we can see it is the acceptance of the will of Yahweh. That is essentially how we can renew or cleanse the inner man, work on it to make it for you to be a better workmanship in Elohim. You know, Yah is the porter, we are the clay, and he will mold us and shape us how he wants us, but he does not expect us to be robots because it's a matter of choice if you be willing and obedient you shall eat the good of the land however if you refuse and rebel you shall be devoured by the sword cfr and so it's a willingness a willingness on our part to make the necessary sacrifices to renewing the inner man to do the things that we know pleases Elohim and the things that we know that are contrary towards the will of Elohim, we do our best to stay away from it, to, to, to renounce it, you know, to see we are not going to be part and parcel of this thing because we know it is disrespectful, is pleasing, is honor, honorable to the will of my father, the one whom I am created in his own image and after his own likeness, the one whom his spirit hovers or dwells within me to make me think, to make me live, to make me do what he has commanded me and you and us to do. Because his word and his spirit is in unity. Unity is strength. There's no divisiveness in the word of Elohim. You know, the word of Elohim is to build and to make us a, a, a type of people that is set apart unto him. Because this is who he, he delights in their worship. He delights in their prayer. He, he delights in all what they do. You know, you know what is to delight? To, to be exceedingly glad and happy, knowing that you are doing his will. 
consider Job. Have you seen one like Job in the land who is true of evil and do it for this good? So, you know, this type of honor Yahweh will bestow upon his children. It's not a uh, situation that you are just living a life without any direction, any hope. And, and you know, Elohim is a, a one who diligently rewards his people and his rewards are what we have to seek in our life today. So if we want to be rewarded by Elohim, receiving of his blessings, then we must consider the renewing of the inner man, the renewing of the mind, the heart. Renewing, renewing, renewing. We just cannot stop emphasizing the importance of renewing the inner man because it is what you have. It's what you know better than any other human being, but Yahweh knew it better than you because he created it. He searched the depth and the ruins of it. He knows what you're going to do tomorrow or the next month or the next year or years to come. You don't know. You might be focused, yes, doing, but you, you really don't know. So that is why it is important to always stay that inner man, stay with the gift of the set apart spirit and not with the works of the flesh. Yes, the distinction must be made. It is very, very important that the distinction be made. Romans 7, 22 to 23, we are, this is gonna be a, a series of three to four part series because on this one telecast, I'm not gonna be able to, because of time, complete this message, but we're gonna have it in the next two or three Sabbaths, because it is very important for us to know and understand that, you know, the inner man must be renewed and it cannot be something that we just have to allow to remain and, 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 and all sort, all manner of, you know, fleshly desires, all manner of, 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 of the works of the flesh dominate this inner man, no, we cannot allow it as saints, as people who believe in Elohim. Uh, Romans 7, 22 to 23 says that, for I delight in the Torah, the law of Elohim, after the inner man, I delight in the Torah. I mean, just read Psalms 119, the entire Psalm 119, and you, and not just 119, but the entire book of Psalms and the Proverbs, and the, 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 the prophets, you know, the minor and the major prophets, the writings, you know, just read them and you will see the essential, you know, the, 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 the high price Elohim place on the inner man, because that's where we establish the relationship with him. That's where we can obey him, you know, from the inner man. What comes from in is, is if you, if you give yourselves to the work of the flesh, that is what we will, you will bring out. But if you give your, your, yourself to the works of the spirit, what comes out is what will be, as we read in Galatians 5, the works of the flesh vis-a-vis -vis the works of the spirit. And it will be seen because it can't be hidden. And so I delight in Torah or in the law of Elohim after the inward man. I'm not in, a, I'm not in that showbiz. I'm not just there to, sh to show up, but within, within, I make that place clean. I make that place set apart as it is being sanctified by the word of Elohim and his set apart spirit. But I see another law. I see, you see what is happening there. He, he delight in the, in the Torah of Elohim after the inward man, but of course, if you, if you do not delight in the law of Elohim after the inward man, you cannot see the other law. You'll be blinded to the other law. But the, 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 the spirit within Rav Shaul, as he's speaking, he says, but I see another law in my member warring against the law of my mind. And I think there's somewhere in the New Testament where he put it beautifully, but realistically, He's saying, basically, there's a tug of war, a push and pull, uh, you know, a halikasi, so to speak. 
because every time he seek to do good, evil is present. You know, it is present, evil. Every time you have a good intention, you seek to do good, evil is present. And that's why he had to, you know, kind of chant down the evil and, and realize, you know, hey, it's not me, but it's Elohim spirit within me. He said, oh, wretched man that I am. If it is for me alone, I finish, I'm dead. But he said, oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of sin? Who shall deliver me? The same, the answer is in the same Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 10, I, Yahweh, I know the, the, the ruins of that, the depth, and I will give man according as his will or his work shall be. And so this is something that is, that every man and woman who, knows Yahweh, knows that they are going through this experience. There is another law, another Torah in his member, warring against the Torah of his mind, the inner man, and bringing him into captivity to the law of sin, which is in his members. That's why Galatians 5 gives you the two sides, the fruits of the spirit, the works of the flesh. So this is the war that is in our members, but of course, you could not have seen this picture if you did not delight in the, the, the Torah, the law of Elohim, in the inner, in, inward man. And that is why you are able, you, are, you have this strength and this fortitude to, 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 to come out of it or to overcome it. Because Elohim's spirit is greater than the spirit that would keep in the, the sons and daughters of, of disobedience. So he said, oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of death, of this death? And he said in verse 25, I thank Yahweh, Elohim, three, Shua, Mashiach, our master, so that with the mind, I myself serve the law of Yahweh, but with the flesh, the law of sin. Basically, that's what it is. So the law of sin cannot dominate the law of Yahweh cannot dominate our minds. Our minds must be dominated or ruled by the law of Yahweh so that the law of sin will have no place in our life. So Paul recognized who shall deliver him. We have recognized who shall deliver us. So let us continue renewing the inner man as we take the last scripture in this first segment of this message, renewing of the inner man, Romans 12, 1 to 2. And it's a scripture that we are very much aware of. We know that he says, this one, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of Elohim, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. So this thing is not about the pastor or the elder or the priest or whatever. It's about you presenting your body as a living sacrifice. While they are there to help you with your faith, to encourage you, you know, to inspire you, et cetera, et cetera but it cannot be a situation where you are dependent wholly and solely on them. You have your work cut out as an individual to do what you know of what to do, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, set apart, a holy, acceptable unto Yahweh, Elohim, which is your reasonable service. It is your personal service to Elohim. While we come as a, as a, as a body, it is very important to understand we as members of the body have to work out our salvation in fear and in trembling. It cannot be something that we play with because it's our salvation. It is, it is between life and death, blessing and cursing. And so the choice must be to choose life. And be not conformed to this world. And this is where we we can find ourselves in a lot of problems by conforming or the conformity of this world. This world meaning the, the works of the flesh, not necessarily, not the physical environment, but the spirit that worketh in that environment within humanity, within mankind. That is the world, not the, the trees and the mountains and, and so on, no. It is a spirit, beloved. It is a spirit. It is something intangible. It is something that could permeate your mind. 
permeate and go through and, and, and can lead you, you know, can persuade you, can, you know, make you do the things that are against the will of Elohim, make you do the things that would cause your inner man, you know, to be deceitful, to be wicked, um, you know, to be unset apart, unholy, unthankful, ungrateful to Elohim. This is what causes us to separate ourselves from Elohim when we conform to this world. But it is very, very important that we understand that as Paul says, Rav Shaul, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. The renewing of your mind is to cast aside the works of the flesh and to ask Elohim to give you his Ruach Kodesh, as you obey him and do his will, that your mind, your heart, your entire being will be renewed so that your sacrifice, your reasonable service will be accepted by him because you have accepted his will for your life. And his will for your life is what helps you and me and us to cleanse or to renew that inner man. And so that we may prove after the renewing of our inner mind, we may prove that which is good and acceptable and perfect will of Elohim, as we just read in Romans 7, of course, who shall deliver me from this body of sin? Yes, who shall deliver me so that I will be in a position in a state whereby my inner man will be renewed on a daily basis. Only Elohim, for he knows it. He searches the depth and the ruins of it to give every man according as his work shall. So let us be honest with ourselves where that is concerned, the renewing of our inner man. For Elohim knows us. We can't fool him. We can't fool nobody, not even ourselves. So blessed be Yahweh for this first part of this message the renewing of the inner man. And if it was a blessing to you, whatever you learn to do, give the praise and honor and continue to study so that you can remain set apart unto Yahweh as you renew the inner man. Shabbat Shalom. Hallelujah.